it's June the 3rd and this angelique tulips are still looking beautiful they are fully bloomed now so I expect that anytime soon the petals will be falling and it'll be time to deadhead them it will be sad to let them go but deadheading will actually do the bulbs a favor because the plant will direct its energies into forming new bulbs underneath the soil instead of forming seeds we also have some alliums blooming beautifully and just down below here is this creeping phlox that I planted um, this is its, its third year now so it has grown very fast it was just a three and a half inch pot creeping phlox to begin with and it has grown very beautiful to cover that area of the garden so I almost wish that that plant was actually on this side right here wouldn't that be amazing if the creeping plox covered this whole area here but it's not too late so I'll plant some creeping plox here and maybe hopefully in a few years time it will be as beautiful as that one I also have echinacea here and these rows have grown very big so fast I only planted this rose last year and we are being visited by ladybugs I have a lot of ladybugs in the garden which is very nice because there's a lot of aphids right now okay and here is another rose this is called More Than Sunrise and I only bought that for $11.98 last year in Walmart and look how big it's grown this is Canadian Shield in red and the leaves are very nice shiny and the new growth is almost like fall foliage it's beautiful so even the new foliage adds interest to the rose while we are waiting for the blooms to come and just decided is a rugusa rose now i bought this primarily because of the rose hips that it produces and the flowers they also are very nice to make edible goods like um, jam and facial water things like that what i didn't consider is this rose actually grows big 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 <laughs> so either i transfer it or give it more room keep it pruned i don't know i shiver in my boots when i think about transferring these roses so i don't know i have three roses here that are going to be cramped but I guess that's where pruning comes in and pruning actually scares me as well so I just planted these roses last year I don't know anything about roses really but I learn as I go another rose here is the grandiflora rose this has beautiful purple flowers very light pur purple flowers and it wasn't by design it was just all by accident that I have purple alliums purple tulips purple um, rose but they will all bloom at not at the same time so by the time the alliums and the tulips are gone this rose grandiflora rose will be producing some flowers hopefully I have some iris these are yellow irises and it's from a friend and there's um, columbine there purple columbine so 
there's actually a color scheme going on here by accident <laughs> because um, I didn't plan them nothing here is planned really I just planted as I went here is another um, purple plant called ajuga it's a um, ground cover and that is also a plant that the friend gifted to me the same a very nice friend that gifted me the irises and look at this very lovely buttercup I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more this is a weed so it started growing last summer very tiny last summer and I thought you know what the leaves look very pretty so I'm not going to uproot them and um, it was just a little speck of plant starting this um, season and I was very curious what it would turn out to be and it turns out it's a lovely yellow buttercup isn't that nice look how shiny the flowers are Down here is another rose, um, I meant a pink rose, I forgot what it's called, I lost the tag, but it seems to be one of the shorter ones in the garden, and here another, another tall one, just beside a lovely blueberry bush, and look at all the fruits in this blueberry. I mean flowers <laughs> I hope that it will turn into fruits one day and this is a very lovely demonstration of how not to cramp I mean how to cramp your plants <laughs> they're all planted so close together when I started out it seemed like an empty space so I tried to put in as much as I can in that space and look how they are growing now it's so cramped i just hope that it won't cause any problems with the roots especially fungus and things like that i know already that this is not enough room for these blueberries so something has to be done but since it's already here and they're already super cramped i'll just worry about that later on if you have any ideas please 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 leave them in the comments box below and that will help a lot this rose is called more than more than blush yeah more than blush it's a shrub rose and the picture actually shows this rose very darker pink but in reality it's a very soft pretty pink unless that tag is actually for this other rose right here because um, this one actually produces darker pinks and this one produces baby pink roses um, I'm going to go through my library and see if I could attach some of the pictures from last year they produced a lot of lovely flowers even though they were just newly planted so that really encouraged me at the time I really don't know anything about roses I just you know went for it I wanted some roses so I just grabbed a few that were available in store they weren't so pricey like this roses here were $12 each at Walmart so why not give it a try right <laughs> um, the worst that could happen is it dies and you just try again next time down here is um, this is a miniature rose so last year I posted a video on how to propagate miniature roses by division 
it was sort of an experiment really and I don't know what's happening in my YouTube channel too so I wanted to post something special so I posted that sort of like a tutorial and with great success look at them now this is exhibit A um, I'm gonna come closer and just in comparison with my hand here see how tiny it is but it's a success because um, when I divided the miniature roses, they did very well in the pots. I left some inside the house, which eventually died. So it didn't like being overwintered inside the house. Lack, lack of sunshine, lack of um, humidity, I guess. Here's, here is another one that is actually done well so this is also a miniature rose I think this is a pink uh, miniature rose the other one is a white one I'm not sure <laughs> they weren't labeled very well so I tried to inter um, interchange the colors this one is a little bit tiny in comparison to oops sorry very shivery there Okay, so this is tiny in comparison to that one. I don't know what happened, but I'm just very glad that she's alive too. So far, all the miniature roses that I divided and planted from last year actually succeeded. They're all alive and well. This is another one right here and this was actually the uh, rose that I planted in the video and look at all these aphids but you know what these aphids are actually also attracting the ladybug so I don't know I just bought neem oil and maybe I'm gonna spray them I don't know look at those aphids I this is my first time coming this close to these little roses for the video and surprise <laughs> and here's another miniature rose right there so success success I didn't do anything else special about these miniature roses. I planted them last year, put some compost in it, and it just weathered the storms, the snow. It was buried in five feet of snow. Some of the branches actually um, were snapped, maybe because of the weight of the snow, but besides that, they're looking fine. So those are some of the miniature roses. We'll go over here and I'll show you a knockout rose. Okay, so this is a knockout rose. The color is red. It's uh, single petals as compared in comparison to the other roses which are double petals. Um, yep, those two roses are super tall <laughs> I didn't check the height of the rose I guess in the tag or I did but I planted them here anyway so there's kind of um, um, disarray I guess is what you call them there's a disarray of height in this uh, little garden bed right here there's a disarray of height there's um crampness <laughs> everything wrong going on and everything right too I guess because they're all blossoming so far anyway let's hope that no problems exist in the future I'll show you my miniature rose that had brotitis blight last year okay so this is a beautiful big big rose I bit the bullet on this one and paid $33 but look at it grow now beautiful 
there's some buds already starting to come up and I think I saw a little flower somewhere here a while ago a little pink flower um, I'm oh right there right there so that's a little baby pink flower coming out the first one for this bush over to this side are dramatically colored lilies. They're dark, dark burgundy. Very dramatic indeed. So I planted nine bulbs in this section last year. And they grew well for the first time. And now it propagated and just filled up the space right here, which is awesome. And here are the columbines. I showed you a little vial from afar and this is how they look like up close. Isn't that beautiful? And just behind it is a seemingly unassuming bush or plant called Lady Susan. This plant will actually overtake this area very soon as it did last year and that was the first time I planted this plant as well just a little tiny plant I think it was a four, four inch pot and it grew so much so this year I expect it to be filling up this space as well and the birds are telling me you talk too much <laughs> no they're, they're enjoying this garden tour right okay so back up a bit yep and here are the tulips so we went around this little garden bed here here coming through okay so in this garden bed alone there were um, I'm counting three four five six seven eight roses oh I forgot about this little guy here this is or was a miniature rose that I planted in here um, it's a, a yellow delicate color and when I planted it here there were four plants in the pot I think two of them died so there's just two plants remaining here it has a beautiful yellow colored I mean delicately colored yellow flowers there so that's also exciting and these um, Black Eyed Susan actually crowds it out a bit so this spring I was thinking of dividing that rose and moving it somewhere but I just learned that in order to successfully transfer a rose must do it when it's still dormant and I have to cut it all the way through to the base about um, 6 inches or actually removing um, up to two-thirds of the bush and just um, remain one-third to move it so uh, I might do that next year I don't know I seem to add a little bit more project on my garden each time speaking of which is just down below here I have these new rose bushes these are Italian eyes rose bushes and they have little buds coming out and more aphids. Oh dear, lots of aphids. The aphids are actually green this year versus last year there were so many black aphids. So I have four of these Italian eyes bushes. They are gifts from my ever generous loving husband for our wedding anniversary. 
just behind these lovely bushes that are to be planted soon are three more miniature roses. Along with some Asiatic leaves. Hello! Thank you! <laughs> And then Here are some of my new miniature roses that I just added to my garden this summer. One has a really nice pink flowers. This is similar to the roses that I divided last year and I made a video on how to divide miniature roses so that you can have more because guess what? Depending on the size of the pot that you buy from the nursery, you can either have four or six little plants in one pot of miniature rose. And if you just plant it just like that, you will end up with something like this. So I have three uh, pots of miniature roses right here and I planted them one feet apart one of the pots of the miniature rose have two colors in it when we started out this one would be a light pink rose and this one's a dark red rose and they both have small flowers shout out for this lovely visitor in the garden it's a ladybug i think she just molted or something because she doesn't have any dots yet and oops sorry guys <laughs> and a little bug right here right so there's some um, three pots of miniature roses right here and as you can see the two colored uh, miniature roses that were in the same pot at the beginning are now maturing to be two big plants super close together same with through with this um, pots of i mean planted miniature roses they're so close together so last year, I experienced for the first time a rose disease called Rotitis Blight. So it's a fungus that attacks the flower and makes it wither even before it could bloom. So that was really sad. I had to cut a lot of the foliage out and sacrifice the flowers. They didn't actually bloom. One of the problems um, that I also had here was it was super cramped. I had a giant hosta growing on this side and on the other side, which added to the crampness of this area and choked out the roses. There was no circulation of air at all. So I plan to move and deep i mean divide and move these roses into a different area um in order to do that i needed the courage <laughs> to hopefully do it right and not lose the roses so i had that idea of practicing on a pot of miniature roses divide them and see whether they will survive the stress of division or if they die but so far 
um, all the miniature roses that I divided and planted from last year are all doing very well right now so which tells me that this uh, roses could be easily moved and they will survive that kind of stress but <laughs> here's a big but here is my entrance to our house our doorway which means that in and out that door the first thing you would see are the roses and what a delight they are when they are in bloom i mean i have these few roses that are sitting on the table right now and they're truly delightful imagine a full packed rose bush right here exploding with flowers i don't have the heart to remove them so we'll just let it stay here in fact instead of removing them i am adding more a new addition to the garden <laughs> my husband and my father helped me dig a portion of the garden what dig again never ending projects <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's gonna end right because um, every time i succeed at something i get this brilliant idea of trying another so the project just keeps coming i say i will do this next year and i end up doing something else something new and awesome and well while we're at this point of the garden i want to show you the peonies i have three peonies or peonies i have this really dark red in color beautiful full packed with flowers excuse me <laughs> i removed the hosta from this spot that crowds the peony and the lilies and another peony right here this is a white peony and it's just um sitting beside this lovely bush right here isn't that gorgeous the new growth on this bush is like almost fluorescent green it's so cool on the ice it's beautiful i love this time of the year when these um, rose bushes i mean um bush <laughs> i don't know what it's called right now but it's prickly they produce new leaves and fresh new life it just reminds me of you know something coming to life after a long rest rejuvenated relaxed well rested it's just beautiful so i love this bush right here and oh sorry about that and the peony which will bloom into big bold quite beautiful blooms gracing it side by side with this green plant i have hosta down here lots of hosta because you know what these hostas they grow very very fast very quickly which is a good thing so i have a lot of um, hostas at the back of the house right now from the hostas that i removed here and I took that opportunity to divide the rose, I mean the hostas as well. I'm stuck on roses. So I have a lot at the back right now, which reminds me I have to go down and water them. Which is a pleasure, by the way. It's a pleasure to water these plants. Um, they're in the shade right now, so even though it rained last night, I will have to go down and water them. These are lilies. Um, they're perennial, so they come up each year which is truly awesome and i have some early varieties right here this is an apricot fudge so this is the earliest to bloom alongside the asiatic lilies they're also early i have some double petals um, in here um, i forgot what it's called but the real i mean i gave it a nickname catherine 
my sister's name. Her favorite color is pink and those double Asiatic ladies are pink and delicate but strong and beautiful just like my sister. So I named them after my sister. And there's also stargazers here. Uh, there's white and red which are the late later ones to bloom so seems like from late spring all through early or late summer we will have Asi I mean Asiatic ladies and stargazers blooming now I have these tulips which are almost done I have been deadheading them and they are interplanted with some for the third year now which makes them five years old and they're blooming beautifully back over to the side so the, these were transplants this is a pride and joy of mine these are single petal peonies there's two varieties on this side which I planted from roots I'm particularly proud of these ones because when I first planted them from roots, that summer nothing happened. Then the next summer, uh, I had shoots. So, oh shoot! <laughs> I thought nothing happened, I thought they died, but voila! Look at them! are perennial daisies and another rose bush right here this is called more than sunrise one interesting thing is this more than sunrise is planted on the root rootstock of this uh, big bush right here so we were trying to prune this bush and we overdid it and actually took a chunk off I regret that but ever since then this rose bush have grown so uh, the size is actually beautiful now but uh, I wanted to plant something nice there in replay to replace the old big chunk of bush that we removed so I planted that rose over there so see how big it is in comparison They were the same size when I bought them from the store, both for $12, but this one grew much bigger than the one at the back. So look 
location matters, right? Since we're here, move over a bit. Okay, want to show you. Sorry, it's so windy. My new project. So, I have that walkway that I placed in the garden last year. So, my husband thought it just makes sense to put a walkway in the middle of a garden, right? So, this was his idea and this was his gift to me. He bought me more roses to put in this area so that when I walk through that walkway, there will be roses on either side. Isn't that very thoughtful? So, these new bushes are called Italian eyes. They don't have any flowers yet. So... We don't know how they would look like but I was researching online and the label actually shows these to be very beautiful plants. And they are the 2021 Rose of the Year and they also won an award back in 2020. I forgot what award that was but that was enough for me <laughs> to buy these roses. I was planning to buy only one of these roses but my ever generous husband said I'll dig up that portion of the garden for you and I think you can fit four. So there you go. We are going to plant four roses on this side. Over. This is a white rubosa rose. It's called hand me something. This is called Peach Cocktail Rose. This was the first cocktail rose that I purchased. And at the back side there is called Color Cocktail. behind it is a rose called at last more new additions to the garden this year is two star magnolias here at the front yard garden i have two more at the back this sedum was from my parents and they just grew beautifully when they start out they really look like a bowl of rosettes a beautiful bouquet so pretty and over to the back is a portion of the garden that i think needs some repairs okay that um clematis right there i don't fancy the variety very much so I'm gonna change that with uh, something more uh, with bigger blooms okay that's it for the front yard garden I think oh before before we go over to this side look how big those peonies are I'm gonna show you a miniature rose that is the first ever miniature rose that I planted in the garden. First up, that's the color cocktail rose. A lot of blooms going on, so pretty. And this is called At Last. The flower starting to open. I have some more echinacea growing here. And okay. Folks, this is a miniature rose. It's um, about three feet tall now. There were six um, little plants there. Uh, there were six little plants in the pot that I planted here when we started out. I think two died. So this big uh, clump of roses right here is composed of four plants right now. 
it has peach uh, flowers very beautiful so that is my trophy from the first ever rose that i planted used to be when i think about roses i shiver in my boots i love them so much the bouquets are very expensive so how i wish i could plant them but i'm very scared at caring for them i, I feel like they're you know tricky and picky so very hard to take care of but after you have one success you just want to try another and another and another and now i have plenty of roses in the garden and for the first time ever i see blooms on this rhododendron that <laughs> is amazing behind it is that is a fake strawberry so it has uh, pretty white flowers resembling strawberries but uh, they don't have fruits I don't think this is the first time I just let it go like that and it's growing very big I used to uh, put them but seeing how deep it is now in the garden it's kind of hard to access so it's kind of it's safe for me <laughs> right now okay so i have more babies here and look how pretty their buds Another beautiful thing about these apricot fudge lilies is I only ever bought three bulbs to start with. Those three bulbs I planted in this garden and they propagated. Each time they would have a baby, I would just take the baby and stick it somewhere else in the garden. So even though it started from way over there, because <laughs> I took the baby and planted it there so that's it for my garden thank you so much for spending this precious time with me every time I walk about in this garden it gives me so much pleasure I know it is hard work to be planting a garden but that kind of hard work is very fulfilling very have more rain it rained all through last night it might rain again today which is nice because after the rain everything just explodes it blossoms so yes how could you not love life when you are surrounded with beautiful things like this there is actually a saying that says gardeners live a beautiful life because they make it that way they design it that way you intentionally surround yourself with beautiful things such as lupins <laughs> this lupin is a fighter 
I had lupins in the garden that I planted from seed two years ago, but then we had roadworks and um, unfortunately the lupins had to be dug up from where they were planted to give way for um, road repairs. And um, I felt so bad, I took some of the, the little lupins and then planted them somewhere and they didn't make it but I tried to throw some seeds all over the place and this one made it growing alongside that big bush I have to fix these bricks more gardening projects for another day <laughs> Thank you so much again for sticking with me and watching my garden tour. I hope you guys have a nice day and happy gardening. Take care.